thou my vision. Amen. We all need a vision. Amen. David said, where there is no vision, the people perish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? If we don't have a vision of the Lord Jesus Christ coming again, then our hope is in vain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if he never comes back, that means he didn't raise from the dead. And if he didn't raise from the dead, then we have no hope. Amen. But he did. Amen. And we do. Yeah. Praise God for it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> turn with me to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. And this isn't necessarily what I'm wanting to uh, talk about. And this, this isn't going to be a, a normal uh, message either. Um, but I did want to point some things out uh, to you concerning these verses of Scripture. It's good to have Zach with us tonight. Yeah. We're glad you're here. Yeah. And uh, you, you come back anytime. It's good to have Richard here with us. Yeah. And always good to have you here, Richard. I think you need to probably give your boy a whipping every once in a while while you're here. And uh, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, that's, good. that's pretty bad when your kids grows up taller than you are. <laughs> but uh, it, it's good to see everybody. These verses of Scripture here in Matthew, most people know these as uh, the Lord's Prayer. But this is not the Lord, Lord's Prayer. Yeah. Yeah. This is what is, should be known as the model prayer. Okay. Uh, it's, it's been mis- uh, named for thousands of years and uh, in, in reality this is how Jesus said you are to pray yeah. okay yeah. and he said pray um, after this manner therefore pray ye okay so he's saying you know use this prayer as a, as a model for you to pray after um, Sean and I kind of talked here in the last, I don't know, a week or so about, you know, some people pray the exact same prayer every time as if repetition is going to do anything. But, you know what, that's what that Jew did when he was standing on the curb and, and he looked into heaven and he says, God, I thank you I'm not like that cow over there. Now, basically, that's what he was doing. He was just repeating words that had nothing to do with... Uh, you know, giving God glory. Yeah. And so, what I'd like for you to do sometime is go through this model of prayer and see all the parts of prayer that God wants you to include in your prayer. Now, I'll give you some hints. He first of all says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, the first thing then we notice here is that he acknowledges God as his Father. Yeah. Yeah. We that are saved have a Father. He's our heavenly Father. The next thing we notice here, hallowed be thy name, we find out that he uh, gives God adoration. Okay? Hallowed, holy is your name. Yeah. That's adoration towards God. That is telling him you are holy, yeah. and for that reason I'm coming to you with my petition. Yeah. Then he prays for the kingdom of God to come and then for God's will to be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now we know for a fact that the will of God is done in heaven. Yeah. And uh, when Satan fell and all the angels that followed him, they have been cast out. Okay, so now then we see that God is in heaven and the will of God is being done by the angels there in heaven. It's a shame that the will of God isn't being done on earth, but we're to pray that His will be done. Yeah. That, and, and we pray that for everyone. We pray that for the people in our church. We pray that for our uh, elected <coughs> officials. We pray that for, you know, the people we work with. Oh God, you know, may Your will be done in their life. Yeah. Just like Your will is done in heaven. Then the next thing he prays for is his substance. It's his daily bread. Yeah. God wants us to pray for what we need. Yeah. Okay? Uh, now, there's some things that, that we don't need. You know, uh, I, I used to know his name, but at Crossroads in Oklahoma City, uh, Shamrock, uh, used to be a, the guy that started that uh, 
last name was Schaumbach, and he used to say that if you will give God or give somebody you know a Cadillac, God will give you a Mercedes Benz, and that you ought to pray for that. Well, now that's not a need, is it? We need to be careful that we pray for our needs, not our wants. And see, that's a want. Who needs a Cadillac anyway? And besides all that, if you buy a Cadillac and you buy an Impala, they're both made by the same company and has the same parts on it. So, I mean, what's the big deal here, you know? And uh, I've driven Mercedes Benz, and, you know, I guess maybe the prestige is nice, but they're no better than any other car. So, God doesn't want us to pray for something that is not a need, okay? God don't care, let me, let me rephrase that, I, I was going to use a double negative, but I won't. God does not care about what kind of car you drive. But He does care if you have a car, whether you use it for Him. Yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, same way, if you don't have a car and you only got a bicycle, He wants you to use it for Him. Yeah. So He asks for our needs, then He says, forgive us our debts. Okay? As we forgive our debtors. In other words, he's talking about sin here. Forgive our sins as we forgive others. And, and it's based on that, friends. Your forgiveness of sins is based on how you forgive others. Yeah. Okay? Then he, he asks to not to be led into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then he says again, For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So this is a model prayer. But if you want to know what the Lord's Prayer is, turn over to John, St. John, and chapter 17, and verse 1. Now this is the Lord's Prayer because this is the prayer of Jesus. Okay? And I'm not going to have you stand tonight because I'm going to read this and comment as we go. Okay? So it's not really just reading a few verses and then... Uh, going through a bunch of what of Jesus verses. prayed for yeah. before he went to the cross. Okay? This is what he prayed to his Father before he went to the cross. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Yeah. Now then we see that. Jesus is doing what he said to model your prayers after. Okay? He's telling God he's his father and he's also asking God to, to glorify him as uh, he glorified the father. Okay? You see, it's a two-way street, isn't it? It's amazing how people want God to bless them, but they do not bless him. Yeah. You understand what I say? People want God to bless them, but they don't want to bless Him. But I guarantee you, unless you bless Him, He's not going to bless you. Yeah. Now, that's the way it works. That's the way God set it up. And if you don't like that, you need to take it up with Him. But when we bless God with our mouth, you see, the only thing He requires, He don't require the sacrifice of a heifer anymore. But he does require the sacrifice of our praise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the sacrifice he wants now. Yeah. He wants us to sacrifice the praise unto him. You know what? It's a good thing when you're going through Walmart and you see something that tickles you, you know, because you find a good deal, just to go ahead and blurt it out. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know why? Because other people are going to hear what you said and then it's going to bring God glory or either it's going to bring damnation upon them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if they look at you and think you're some stupid idiot for saying that, guess what? They just damn themselves. You're not the one that is down. You're the one that lifted God's name up. Yeah. We as Christians, we're, we're too lax in giving God praise and honor and glory sometimes. Uh, the Mervins. How many of you miss the Mervins? Yeah. I miss them guys. You know what the Mervins and their kids would do when they went to Walmart? 
they'd go to the beer section and in every one of those 12 packs they would put a track telling people how to get saved. That's what the Mervins did. <laughs> Is that bringing God honor and glory or what? Yeah. Absolutely. Now some people say that's just a little bit much, Brother TJ. Look at verse 2. Thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Okay, now then he's praying for the power of God over all flesh for him that uh, he should give eternal life to as many as God had given him. Okay. Now then, how many has God given him? We don't know. The Bible says go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah. The scripture says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah. The Bible teaches us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and that we are to preach the gospel, which according to Paul is the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. Yeah. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. So that's how we are to present the gospel, because you know what? how many is going to be saved. Do you? So, I'm supposed to preach to every creature. Is that not true? Yeah. Absolutely. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And this is life eternal, that they may know you. Life eternal is in knowing the Father. And Jesus said, nobody can go to the Father except through who? Jesus. Me. Mm -hmm. He said, if you want to get to the Father, you've got to go through me. Yeah. Now, he is the door to heaven. Yeah. And if you want to get to heaven, you're going to have to go through Jesus yeah. Christ. There's no doubt about that. So he says that this is life eternal. Praise God. If you want eternal life, that you know God and Jesus Christ, whom God sent, the only begotten Son of the Father. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. Now then listen to what He says. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work that you gave me to do. Yeah. How many of us, or how many have, that have died and gone on can say, I finished the work that you gave me to do? A lot of people don't even know that God gave them a work. That's true. Everybody here that was here when I was pastor here knows that I, I, I taught everybody should have a ministry. Man. The Bible teaches that. Paul taught that. Everybody should have a ministry. Man. And if you don't have a ministry, you need to be asking God what ministry it is that he wants you to do. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I have no idea. Brother, Brother Clifford, God gave you the ministry to the nursing home. And you've got a ministry here in the church. I mean, you've got a ministry to witness at, uh, on your job. Yeah. But now, I don't know. <coughs> Rena's a pretty good photographer. I'm sure God wants her to tell others about Jesus, yeah. don't you? Mm -hmm. I can pick on her. She's my daughter. <laughs> See? Yeah. God wants us to have a ministry and then he wants us to finish that ministry what is it that God calls you to do and, what, and then how are you supposed to finish it and now verse 5 O Father glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee from uh, before the world was now he's giving God glory again talking about the glory that he had verse 6 says I have manifested your, thy name unto men which you gave me out of the world thine they were and thou gavest them me and they have kept thy word Amen. you see Christ kept his word and he did exactly what the father had told him to do Verse 7, now they have known that all things whatsoever you've given me are of you. That's part of our ministry, folks. To make sure people around us understand that everything we have came from God. Yeah. I don't care how bad you think you have it, but the badness you have is the goodness of God. Yeah. 
Because the goodness of God is what has led you to salvation. We should never say, I've got it bad. Should we? No. We, we don't have it. <coughs> Talking, you, you know, here lately about my childhood and all the things that we had to do. You know, I started milking a cow when I was six years old. I knew how to strip that cream out of that cow. You know, and, and mother, after I started milking, she wanted me to milk all the time because she knew I was going to get all the cream. You know, some of the other kids would just barely do it. They'd just get what they wanted and then make the rest of the cat. You see, God's given us a ministry and we need to understand that it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Amen. And that there's nothing that happens to you that God doesn't know about. And he's got the answer for. Verse 8 says, For I have given unto them the works which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The Father sent Jesus. Yeah. And we have him today. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us as the only begotten Son of the Father. You see, Jesus is the Word. So, God sent His Son into the world, the Word, that we might know the Father. Amen. Now then, listen to what He says in verse 9. Now this is Jesus' prayer. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Huh. Now we know the Bible teaches us to pray for our rulers. But he's saying here not to pray for the cosmos, which involves all of it. What he's saying here is, is that we shouldn't be so worried about what's happening in our world that we pray for it instead of praying and doing what God's called us to do. What, what difference does it make if a meteorite comes through the stars and hits earth and destroys it? If you're saved, you're going to heaven. What does it matter that we have global warming? And one day we're all going to fry. I'm saved. I'm going to go be with the Lord. You see, God doesn't want us to pray for those things. That's selfish prayer. He's wanting us to pray for others as far as people are concerned. Amen. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou gavest me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now that, that's a little tongue twister there. <laughs> mine are thine, thine are mine, and we're all one. Isn't that right? Well, sure, the Bible tells us we're one in Christ Jesus. The church is the body of Jesus. Amen? If you don't believe that, turn over to Ephesians chapter uh, 4, and you'll find out. And I'm not going to turn over but you'll find out that there's a one body. Yeah. One body, just like there's one hope of your calling, one Father, one Son, one Holy Spirit. There's not many gods, is there? There's only one God. Yeah. <coughs> Verse 11 says, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, or to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. Now he's praying for us to be one as the Father and the Son are one. In Ephesians chapter 5, it talks about the mystery.
You won't know why that it thrills our heart when Desiree or anybody gets up and sings a song. Yeah. You want to know why that it feels so good to be in this building with you? Yeah. Because Jesus prayed for us many, many years ago yeah. that we might be one. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And God help us to strive that we are one. Yeah. Amen. As bad as I hate to admit that, Brother Sean, me and you supposed to be one, brother. Quit calling me Peepaw, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. That, that, that's actually my favorite word now. Yeah, you made it my favorite word. Aww. I'm, I'm glad that you count me as Peepaw. Well, our time is up, but I want you to go through the rest of the chapter. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to read it because it's not that, that much, okay? Verse 24, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Amen. You see, the reason we're one is because of love that the Father had for the Son and the love that the Son had for the Father and the love that the Son had for them is the same love that is in us. Amen. And if we don't have that same love, then we need to start asking why. We need to start asking. You might not like everything about me because God doesn't like everything about me. You know how I know that? Because he's still working on Man. me. Man. He's still revealing to me things that I need to change in my life. Man. Just as he is every one of you. Yeah. Don't be ashamed or, or get to, to depressed because you still have sin in your life. <laughs> and they say in the army, suck it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got sin. But let's let the Holy Spirit do His work. Amen. Let's, let's go to church. Let's read His Word. Mm -hmm. Let's receive the ministry that He's given us. Amen. Let's do the work of the Lord and see how better your life will be. Amen. You know what? When, when you start giving to God more than He gives you, your life will change mm -hmm. drastically. And I hope every one of you will give everything you've got to God. Amen. Because that's what he wants, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. That's what he looks for. Okay, let's all stand.